For this 10 minute daily practice drawing, we're looking at a corner of a colonnade in Berlin's museum's quarter. Now, in some ways it's a relatively simple structure, although there's simply a reasonable amount of it. But you'll see me start with this upper long rectangular platform for the shallow dome on the top of this corner section of the colonnade. And I choose that because it seems to me the most uh, clear spot to get the proportion easily. And then I can use that as a reference point. Now, I did actually make a fundamental mistake with this, which at the time when I drew it, I was confused about, but I couldn't really see what was happening until it was all finished and I was looking at it in preparation for the voiceover. I'll explain that problem when it occurs. Although I've got to say, even seeing it now, I don't really notice it in the finished drawing. So I get the front of this platform and I draw the decoration on it. Now we do see the left hand side a bit as it angles back at a reasonable perspective angle because it's a fair bit higher from where we're observing. And it's the sort of detail that's easy to miss because of the shade, the dark shade that's on that side of the structure. But it's very important to have noticed it because it does affect the positioning of this dome. If we hadn't seen that section and drawn it in and then look carefully at where the dome sits, we might have just quickly placed the dome on top of just the front of the platform instead of taking it onto the left hand side a bit that we've drawn as you see me doing now. Now another thing I do with this sort of dome is I make a mark on each end where I want it to come back to earth so to speak and also for how high I think it should go. Particularly with the height mark it gives me a chance just to with that dot visualize the dome and think hmm, is that going to be high enough or too high or is it too low? And then I can adjust the dot or I can sometimes just adjust the dome as I draw it. But I find overall that's helped me to have more accurate dome heights. And now we have these ribs, these metal ribs coming down. And it's important with these to make sure we get the fullness of the curve at the very top of this because if we don't, if the line angles down too directly, it makes the top of the dome look less round. And that can also affect the, the perspective perception of what angle we're looking at it from. So now I just reserve some of this space for these leaves that come in from the right in front of the actual structure now underneath that we're going to draw. So always be alert for things that intrude in front of a section that we're about to draw. And I probably spend just a little bit too much time at this point doing the tree. I, I think it's probably best to just do a line to reserve the space, but leave the shading for a bit longer. Because if I just do a little bit of shading now, I may not be using quite the same technique as I use later. So now we have this front section, if you like, not counting the colonnaded section that goes off to the left. Look, what I did wrong was that if we look at that central sort of piercing um, space under the dome, to the left of it, we've got two pilasters very close together and on the right we've got two pilasters very close together but somehow I got mixed up and thought we had two pilasters on the right hand side plus another concrete or stone section next to it the same way visually it looks on the left hand side. I didn't realize that on the right hand side we just have the two pilasters and there's nothing further and so in effect I've narrowed my door slightly my entranceway. However, partly I think because of the tree coming in, just inter interrupting visually that corner, I really think for once I might have got away with it.
So just add in the decoration. Notice with these um, medallions on the top, how I space it is I do one at each end and then I count how many are involved. And in this case, it's three. And so I can place one in the center and then I can fill the gap on each side. If there's an even number between the, between the two end ones, then I need to just juggle them as I go. And I might actually put a dot somewhere to help indicate where I think they're going to be just to check the spacing. But I find that starting at one end and just adding the motifs all the way along until we get to the end is not a very accurate way to get the correct number. Sometimes, or often in fact, these sorts of motifs actually align with uh, architecture beneath them, such as columns. And if that's the case, it's important to spot that and to do that in our drawing. But make an adjustment for some any setback that might take place that visually might shift them from the structure that they're aligned with further down on the building. So now I'm adding these little figures here, taking a selfie. These are the sorts of the sorts of poses it's good to try and get some lines for. So so many people are photographed holding phones up to their face, either to take a photo or holding them up higher to look down on themselves with a with a selfie. So it's good to be able to capture that somehow. Although we don't want to get, as I often say, bogged down in trying to draw figures. If we try and draw too much detail for them, it's going to look awkward. We want to draw the effect of the figure in that pose rather than the actual detail of that figure. So now I come along trying to establish what's happening here. Now, of course, you're seeing all this in real time, but in a moment, we're actually going to switch to triple time because there ended up being a lot of shading, a lot of extra work that was needed for this, but I thought it was still a good, a good subject for a 10 minute drawing. If you want, you can just draw the architecture in 10 minutes, which is basically what I did without worrying too much about the foliage or the values. But these areas are very dark and with a 0 0.2 millimeter pen, it's not really possible in the time frame we have to create dark value with it. But there's nothing to stop you from spending longer or coming back for a second session and applying the value to your 10 minute line drawing of the architecture. There's a row of metal posts that come across the road here. And they also conform to a certain perspective pattern. Some more couple of figures we have here. Now, I was going to draw this sign that's just to the right. Uh, two signs on a tall post just to the right of these ladies. But of course I should have drawn the pole for the signs first because it doesn't really line up with the ladies very well the way I've done it. So I broke my rule of always do front things first and I've learnt that it's a good rule to not break in future. So need to be very, very gestural with what we're drawing behind. It is fairly shaded, so we can't really see a great deal of detail anyway. But we still want to create the effect of depth going back, distance going back. And so there's three Doric columns that we get to see here, which are largely silhouetted. Possibly I should have done the line work for these columns vertically for the hatching. That certainly would have been quicker and I could have got them darker more effectively. But I did feel that horizontal lines visually was going to work better, even though I couldn't do nearly as much value that way. And so just working on this sign now. I could have left it out, but when we draw a busy urban environment, if we leave out all the things that make it busy, then 
it really isn't looking how it looked. And that's really up to us. If we want to just capture the classic architecture, then we can leave out all these things. But if we want to capture the sense of this is a, this is a busy urban location, then it is better to put them in. Although it can become quite complex at ground level, as we can see here. And so now I've just sped up the camera to three times my drawing speed. So I'd pretty much finished the architecture in the 10 minutes. And we come to a few more details and then basically the hatching. So we have a similar setup here as we had in the right hand side except that the perspective angle changes a little. And so now I'm working on this foliage up here, which is further back than the foliage I've already drawn. So very loose, very gestural hatching, but I'm still trying to create a sense of bunches of, of leaves of if you like smaller canopies within the canopy that that capture light and shadow and shade in different ways but equally i do want it to feel darker than the other values because it pretty much is the darkest area except perhaps what's directly underneath it but i know it's going to be harder to get this as dark as perhaps it should be already feeling that I'm way over on time. What I want to do at this stage though is to put enough hatch in so that the areas I haven't hatched do look lighter because that's really why we're doing this. We're doing the hatch in to highlight the areas that are still more lit. And so we can get something of the effect even though it's not as dramatic as our reference. And then there's just a few more details at ground level. And then I call it a day, pretty much. Just a few more lines there. Well, what do you think? I hope you give it a go. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button for me. And you'll find this photo on my channel community page. So why not give it a go? As a 10, 15, 20 minute drawing exercise in one or two sessions. It's a great little structure to try and get our pen around. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it in whatever time it takes, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.